Hi everyone, thanks for joining in. I'm excited to have Lisa Timoney joining me. Hi Lisa. Hello, hi Jackie. Hello everybody. And um, some of you might remember Lisa was our author for the day a little while ago and good to have you back again to talk to me about your books. Thank you for having me. So um, a little bit about Lisa. Lisa's originally from Yorkshire in the UK, but now lives in the London suburbs. She started her career teaching English and drama and writes novels about family drama. And her books are Her Daughter's Secret, Her Mother's Lies and His Secret Wife. And I just want to mention, I just read her his secret what sorry his secret wife which is um your latest book and absolutely loved it first time reading one of your books and i gave it five uh -huh. stars oh did you so yeah Thanks. so That's really great. really enjoyed oh, it and look forward to reading more of your books thank you so wondering just want to do you want to start off by telling us a bit about his secret wife Yes, absolutely. So His Secret Wife is my third family drama and the title does give a little bit away because mm. it is about a secret wife, but it's not quite so simple as that. Um, there is more mystery to it really uh, and I think that my books, although they are family dramas, they do tend to have a fair amount of suspense in. Um, this book uh, centres on two families. The, it's uh, from the point of view of two women. We have Elle, who is the mother of Harry, um, and he is the, just gone seven and he's struggling a little bit, bless him. Um, he's a quiet boy. He's, I think he's adorable, but I invented him, so I suppose I would. Um, and then we have Jen, who is a little bit older, and she is feisty. She's a theatre director, and she's a, a lively character. She doesn't take any rubbish from anyone, put it that way. And her daughter Cora is also seven. And um, she also starts to have some problems. So there is, um, both children turn out to uh, be neurodivergent. And um, so there is a big ADHD element in this book, but I hope that's not off-putting because it's all involved in, um, in the plot. Uh, and it's all interwoven. Um, and I loved writing that element of it because my daughter has ADHD mm. and we only really worked it out uh, because she has the inattentive subtype. Um, she's not hyperactive. And so I didn't, th I didn't think um, that there was any way she would have ADHD. And, and these children in this book also don't display the symptoms that I thought, even though I used to be a teacher, um, have uh, that ADHD presents. It presents very differently to how we thought it presented, and I've tried to put that across in the book. Mm. Did you find? Did you find that, Jackie? Did you find that you learnt a little bit more about it? Yeah, about and I wondered if you had some connection to it as well. So it's interesting to know that. Yeah, but I mean, um, quite so, quite so, different than maybe some of the typical um, stereotypes, isn't it? Exactly. I think there was a stereotypical view of somebody with a new mm. condition, and actually, all of those stereotypes are so far from the truth. So I was hoping that this book might go a little way towards um, clarifying how it can really present. Mm. Um, but in amongst that, there's quite a lot of drama. Yeah. Um, and I'm really enjoyed writing it. I really enjoy it. I think, well, Cora and Jen were my favourite characters in this. What about you, Jackie? Yeah, but I, I really love the children, though, as well. Um, oh, sorry, you oh. said Cora, didn't you? That's what you said, Cora. I did, yeah. yeah. I loved Cora. She's, um, she's a chatty little fellow. Yeah. She has a unique view of the world. Yeah. Well, she? So yeah. I'm glad that you like her. I yeah. Love her too. And um, the male character, who goes by a couple of names, um, he mm -hmm. certainly weaved himself into a huge mess, didn't he? Well, he did. And uh, what I thought was amusing about him is he truly thought that he was doing it for everybody's mm. benefit. You know, 
you know, oh, my sacrifice. Yeah. You know, I've tried so hard to make everybody happy. And yeah. We all know people like that. Don't yeah. You? And, and I, I did really have a bit of a soft him. spot for his father as well, I have to say. Uh-huh. He was a troubled soul. Yeah. Wasn't he? Yeah. But um, I sort of felt he, like he, he sort of was trying to do the right thing, but. I, I think that's another really interesting element, the um, the connection between addiction and neurodivergent mm. conditions is, mm. it's a really, and also I think when you know that you can be a bit more sympathetic, mm. um, but you don't know what you don't know, mm. so that I try, I try and get that in there, hopefully not with the crowbar but, um... <laughs> yeah and i'm really interested to know what was your first um idea for his sacred wife right this is probably going to surprise you because publishing is a really strange business mm. really strange so when i got my three book deal with avon what happened was they bought two books i'd already written so i'd already written oh, okay. her daughter's secrets and yeah. um, her mother's lies mm. and they wanted a third book and uh, my editor at the time, lovely Thorn Ryan, said, I think that his secret wife is a good title. And I sort of went, mm, okay, well, that, that, that could be interesting. Let me have a little think about it. So bizarrely, it started with a title. Oh, really? So you didn't even have the yeah. story and the title came first. Wow. That's probably the first I time I've had an author tell me that. Yeah, and, and this is, I think, there are many different ways that publishing works. And because this is quite a, I mean, mine are a commercial imprint of HarperCollins. And um, commercial means they want to sell books, they want to sell, and they mm. think, right, what would, what would sell? What would be a good title that would grab people's attention? Um, because publishing is a business, that's mm. all, isn't it? And that's the business I'm in. So I thought, okay, I can work with that. Um, and at the time, I was thinking about writing a non-fiction book about everything I'd learned about ADHD. Um, and that was going to be called If Only I'd Known, because if I'd known how it really presents, then uh, I would have known a lot earlier about my daughter. Mm. So I thought, maybe I can combine the two. And so I thought, yeah, a strange starting point. Um, and you would think that you wouldn't necessarily have as much passion for something if an editor had said, work with this title. Mm -hmm. But really, you, that was all they said. And then when I came back with this outline, it was, yep, love it, mm -hmm. write that. So, mm -hmm. so that. That was all the input there, but it it worked. Hopefully it worked. I really like that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, are you able to tell like us... Could you tell us a bit about your other two books as well? I'm interested because I haven't read them. I'm interested to know if they've got like um, some addictions or disorders or something in wow. them as well. And interestingly, this one, uh, his, uh, confused there, her daughter's secret. This is mm. my first one, um, and there is an element of addiction this, but it's it's a small. It's a small element. Mm. We have a teenage daughter who has run away from home after a tragedy has happened. Um, and her mother has been looking after her six-year-old niece, who does actually have um, a condition called Sturge Beba. Okay. And that's where birthmarks on the face um, also exist on the brain. Oh, and it's okay. quite an uncommon it's an uncommon condition mm. um and to be honest little phoebe in the book isn't enormously affected by it, other than the birthmarks on her face but she also has a form of epilepsy because okay. of it but mm. that is managed so she's doing fine she's absolutely doing fine um but we have a man in this who is her father little phoebe's father who isn't he doesn't have everybody's best interests at heart and so, and he has a massive grudge mm. against B's uh, daughter who's run away. B obviously wants to find her daughter, but he's told her that she won't be able to look after Phoebe anymore if she lets her daughter back into her life. Oh, and God. so B has got to choose between a child she's grown to love and her own daughter. And 
drama happened. Mm. Drama happened, mm. not family drama in that one. And then we have a mother's life. Can you see the cover on that? Yeah, one? that's um, a great. And I was going to say, I love the cover of her Sacred Wife as well. So all of yeah, yeah. I think the designer is brilliant. Mm. This actually looks like the younger me. Oh, okay. Exactly yeah. The hair yeah, style. the hair. Like, oh my gosh! This <laughs> was not me. It was not me, and I hadn't even met the designer at this stage, but I quite like that. Um, and this uh, starts with a character called Bonnie who leaves her home in Scotland and everything she loves, her business and everything, to move to a town where she doesn't know a soul. Oh, okay. We just know that she wants to make amends for something, mm. but we don't know what it is. And she goes to work in a storage facility, um, which is owned by Alice, who is um, a little bit uptight, poor old Alice, uh, and her daughter Laura. And so those are the three characters in that book and um yeah it's again full of secrets mm. and lies hopefully a bit of suspense hopefully a bit of a twist uh and lots of emotion i'm very interested in the the mother and daughter dynamic mm. and i'm a, a woman with two daughters but also uh i was adopted when i was a baby and so there is uh, somebody out there who gave birth to me, but I don't know anything oh, about. Oh, okay. I mm. have my mum. Mm. I also have a stepmum. So uh, you can see why I write family mm. drama. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds like a lot of secrets in that as well in your books. Absolutely. They're all full of secrets and lies and consequences and... Um, mm yeah hopefully quite emotional i do always try a full humor as well because i think things would be i when i'm reading something that is sort of gut-wrenchingly emotional i think i feel quite exhausted by it mm. so my books are possibly more dramatic and um there is always going to be humor in there yeah yeah and i'm wondering like about readers like reading all these secrets and that have you had any readers um reach out to you and maybe share any of their secrets with you no but that's a question i'd like to ask that's a good <laughs> question uh no i've had quite a few people get in touch after um his secret wife to say that they're actually going to be looking um into whether they might need a diagnosis or their, their children might mm. because they've discovered more things about um neurodivergent conditions mm. so that's that's interesting yeah well that's a good mm. yeah that, mm. i was quite surprised at how many messages i've got mm. following that mm. and any um woman who'd reached out to say that they found their husband did have a secret wife oh no yes. <laughs> no but having said that <laughs> I am um, the the I got the idea because uh, my mum's next door neighbour discovered that her partner had two other partners. He was a long distance lorry driver. Oh, and, um, and a, someone in each two different families: one down south, one in the Midlands, and one in the north where she oh, lived. Wow. So I don't think it's just as uncommon. As no, I people. yeah. I would probably agree with. I don't really know though all the effort, and I don't know how people could even. <laughs> well, I bet women couldn't. I bet women no. couldn't. You know, I think there's a, there's a too much effort. There, yeah. Mm. We're busy running the families. Yeah, exactly. And could you tell us a bit about what you like to maybe read yourself, and if there's something you've read lately you want to recommend to us. Yes, absolutely. Um, I read a lot. What I do more than anything else, actually, is listen audible. Oh, oh yes, I yeah. It's great, isn't it? Addicted. Mm. Um, and uh, so the things I like to read predominantly, I like literary fiction. I used to be an English teacher, so I will probably always lean towards literary fiction. I love psychological thrillers. And in fact, I have a contract for a psych thriller which I'm writing uh, now. Mm. Uh, and I love historic fiction as well. Um, so recently I read uh, Annie Lyon's book, um, 
that's the Air Raid Book Club, and that came out recently with, I think, Headline. And that's historic fiction, but it's also very uplifting, and it's about books. So it's mm. an Air Raid Book Club. I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, another historic fiction one that I read recently was Claire McGlasson's The Misadventures of Margaret Finch. Okay, and that's that about... Interesting. Oh, it, it's so great. It's about mm. Blackpool between the wars. I don't know if you've heard of Blackpool in the UK, but it's um, yeah, it used okay. to be where yeah. all the northern towns went on holiday. Mm. And so they have all these sort of freak shows and all this stuff. And it's based on a real story. So that was really, really interesting. Um, and uh, psych thrillers. I've been reading a lot of Ruth Ware recently. Because oh, yes. She's yeah. A Mm. absolute genius at plots such tightly plotted thrillers um i just finished the woman in cabin 10 and my oh yes was actually yeah mm. by the end of that one and like all the twists at the end you know mm. so, yeah those are those are books that i've really enjoyed recently mm. and what are you working on at the moment well, just this morning, I pressed send on an uplifting novel. Um, so uh, that, that's that gone to my agent today. So it's a little bit scary because I think, oh, no, I've got it all wrong. Um, so a bit different from your other three? A little, yes. Mm. So, uh, in fact, the things that I'm working on at the moment will probably come out under a different name. Because, okay. Again, because it's quite publishing is weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, every different genre they prefer because I, mm. I suppose I can just see what they mean because um, if somebody says oh I really like that Lisa Timley book but then they choose another one and it's a completely different genre they might like, mm. this was not what I signed mm. up for so the uplifting one I think is going to be out in February if things go to plan and uh, that will be under the name Kate Story, as far as I'm aware, but it hasn't been announced yet. So okay. I can't really so say too much. Yeah. Um, but that is, again, a book about books. Okay. The English teacher in me mm. loves that. <laughs> and it's about a library. And I have based that one partly in West Greenwich Library in London. And um, it's a beautiful old Carnegie library, and it's, oh, it's such a beautiful mm. building. Um, so that's an uplifting one. That's gone to my agent today. So fingers crossed my agent likes it. I'll do whatever amends she suggests, and then I'll send that to my editor, hopefully mm. in a couple of weeks. Uh, and as I said, I'm also writing a psychological thriller. Mm. Um and I'm very excited about that one, but that one won't be out until 2025. Okay. So mm. That's a long lead time. Mm. Um, Sounds yeah, all so, very exciting, uh, though. Yeah, because I I read very very broadly, mm. um, and so I I think I would like to continue, if possible, to write in different genres because mm. that keeps it quite fresh as well. Mm. But um, see what the future holds mm. and your books that you've written so far they have quite in-depth characters just um wondering if you could be a character from one of your books for a day who would you choose and why right uh good question i would choose jen i would choose jen yeah. partly because if I wasn't a writer, I think I would quite like to be a theatre director. Mm. Um, when I was teaching drama um, at a school, um, we did a lot of production. So I directed um, Journey's End, The Tempest, um, I produced Jesus Christ Superstar. Lot, we did lots of really enjoyable productions. And um, bringing characters to life from from the page is it's really good fun deciding how they're going to say a line, where they're going to move, what their facial expressions are going to be. That's a really enjoyable and stimulating way to spend your time. So I think I'd like to be Jen to be the theatre director. And also because she is, I think, uh, even more forthright than I tend to be. I'm from mm. Yorkshire and everybody tends to be quite plain speaking there. <laughs> um but Jen uh yeah she she doesn't she knows who she is 
and she is mm. quite happy with who she is and she she's a strong woman and yeah mm. I, I like her I would be her I think yeah yeah <laughs> and um his secret wife is there a fate without giving us any spoilers or anything have you got a favorite part in the book Oh, I see. But I went to one part that I can't tell you because that comes as a surprise. Mm. Um, uh, I think the scene where everybody realizes what's going on. Yeah, when they all turn up. And and they... <laughs> yes, they they all end up in the same place, mm. and um, the character is exposed and. I also like the fact that Michael comes in at that point as well. I think that that I really that that appeared to me in my head as I was typing, mm. and I just thought, oh, <laughs> oh I love it when that happens. Mm. Um, so yes, I think it is when the 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 secret is exposed is my favourite bit. Yeah. And do you find um, part of the rice, do you find any part of your writing process to be the most difficult part? Uh, editing, the first edits, so the structural edits, when they come back from your editor and they say, I don't like this strand. Mm. Um, they don't say I don't like that. They're always really, really lovely. Um, but they say, <laughs> perhaps we could take this and add this and there's always um i don't know a day where you just want to cry because you think oh my god i thought it was all right it's not all right we've got to and there's so much work to do but then i found that once you start doing it it makes absolute sense it mm. yeah, i mean editors really are magicians they can take a book and they can they can just make it shiny. Mm. I don't know how they do it because they don't change anything. They just make suggestions. But I suppose they know that's their job. They know how to make it better. Mm. So although that it could be a little bit traumatic because you're like, oh god, so much work, and and also cutting out scenes that you've worked hard on and yeah. you've written a few times, and then it just has to go in the bin. That's hard. Mm. But um. I, I see the point in it. Mm, mm. And do you have a favourite place to write? I write here usually. Yeah. So this is my this is my writing spot. This is my little office. I've got the garden out that way, books but, uh, that way, and behind me there. So my computer's behind me, and if you can see, I'm um, hanging up there. Those are the characters from my uplifting book. What oh, I do is okay. when I'm typing. I've got pictures of my characters. In fact, that is part of the job I absolutely love. So when I'm plotting, I create the characters in my head and then I find their photos. Just oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. But by the time they go up there, they're real. Like, yeah. Really, in my head, they really exist. And so if I am typing and I can't imagine how they would look at that point or mm. how they respond, I tend to look up and it and it does it comes to me because they they exist weird being a yeah. writer because they actually exist in my head mm. um, do you so ever show it, those I, pictures to um like the person who's designing your cover i haven't been asked yet actually. no okay because no. that's quite interesting you have yeah those the photos and mm. Because I know a lot of authors would have something in your head, but to have actually found the photos of them. Yeah, I I think that with the cover I, and the title, actually, I have nothing to do with the titles or the mm. covers. Um, and I think it's safer for me that way. I know a lot of authors struggle with that because they have an idea in their head. But I my job is to make the text as good as possible. Mm. Um, their job is to publish and market mm. so i just have to believe that they know what they're doing and, and that's down to them so mm. yeah my, my characters are but also i try not to describe them 
really, really clearly the character of Eva, because even though uh, the character in the middle there, she is a lady in her 70s, mm. she's very slight, she's got a pixie cut hairstyle, but that's pretty much as much as I will give, because people, again, like to create them. Yeah, have your own, yeah. Mm. And what about the characters' names? Um, do you... How do you find I'm them and so do you use lazy. names of people I'm you know? So lazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I did, I did, mm, if I'm going to kill somebody, then yes, I would definitely give them a tip. <laughs> That's really horrible, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I started off writing a book really, really naively with the names Felicity and Barbara in. Okay, yeah. And <laughs> by the time I spelt Barbara 400 times, incorrectly I mm. thought you know what no I like L and Jen <laughs> they're a lot easier names <laughs> <laughs> I know that you can set up so that you know it predicts the name mm. when you have to press but I have never done that because partly because when I'm in the flow I'm just typing um but yes I prefer short names that's terrible Isn't that terrible <laughs> but also people I don't know that when you're choosing a name especially because I've got a look in my head of that person. Mm. It's got to fit. But also you've got to aim for something that's age appropriate. So I might look at baby names mm. of the year they were born and choose one from that list. Um, yeah, so lots of different ways of doing it. And one of them is if I can type it. <laughs> And you said you had two daughters. Would you put their names on any of the characters? No. no they don't no, want you to? They wouldn't want me to. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is a question you get asked a lot, actually. Do you base your characters on anybody you know? Mm. Um, and I don't think any authors can really do that. I think we all pick elements from yeah. everybody we know. Mm. Um, but I, I don't think you could, because for the simple reason that it would be really limiting, because if you were writing a character and you needed them to do something, but you had the image of the person you know, unless it was a memoir or something, um, you would think, oh, no, they don't do that. Yeah. And so really, yeah, it makes it a bit hard. Yeah. Um, so I think it would be, I think it would be very limiting to write somebody new. So if I was going to write my children, mm. um, use their names, then I would, yeah, I would fall into my own trap. I think. Mm. So. Mm. Well, thanks so much for chatting with me. It's been great talking to you and, um, good luck for your next books and hope that we might have you back again in our group. I might have a different name that time. Yeah, you <laughs> might do, yeah. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Jackie. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, well, thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.